welcome back to my channel. So today in this video we're going to be talking about something that I have found extremely interesting for a very long time. So something I think I've mentioned before is that I have this love slash, slash obsession with really old structures and buildings. Um, houses, stuff like that. Things that were built like back in like the 1800s and maybe even further than that that are still kind of around because I love to hear the history and everything about it and how it was built, how long it took to build, but also the dark, creepy, spooky history behind it. So I've had this idea for a long time, um, but I haven't really taken the time to do it. And the way I wanted to do it is um, different because with COVID going on, things are a little more limited. So I decided I'm just going to start doing this now and then, I don't know, expand later. So I was actually... I watched a video recently um, of, I think the YouTube channel is Glam and Girl, Gore, wow, Glam and Gore? I said Glam and Girl. Glam and Gore, and she talked about the um, uh, Cecile, the Cecil Hotel, um, and I thought that was really, really interesting and really cool, so I decided to actually talk about a hotel that I find really, really interesting that is literally down the street from where I live, and that is the Ben Lomond slash Big Low Hotel. Um, it's one of the buildings that is the one of the oldest buildings in Ogden, uh, which I think is really cool. So today, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to get into some of the history, some of the dark history, and some of the spooky history within this hotel. Right now, at the moment, I believe it is called the Biglow Apartments. I think they converted it into an apartment building in 2019 um, or 2017. Um, I couldn't really get any confirmation in that because when you look up the website, you can actually book rooms. So I don't know if like maybe part of it is still a hotel, but I know a lot of it is an apartment complex. But before the Biglow and the Ben Lomond were even a thing, back in 1891, it was known as the Reed Hotel. Um, originally, the building only had five uh, stories, so it only had five floors, um, and it had 140 rooms and a restaurant on the fifth floor. Um, it was said, and potentially more than likely, it was used as a boarding house in the Prohibition area, and there's actually a lot of people here in Ogden, you can ask a lot of the Ogdenites, the locals, about the tunnels underneath 25th Street. Uh, a lot of people believe in them and a lot of people don't, but basically these tunnels were created by people so they could smuggle alcohol or so government officials could, you know, <laughs> have prostitutes um, and not be seen, drugs, stuff like that. Um, that So that way, you know, they could smuggle things. and like gang members and stuff could get from the hotel to wherever they were going without being seen or without being caught, which for a lot of people, prostitution, alcohol, drugs, gangs are really not that, uh, are not that uncommon when it comes to hotels. I guarantee you any hotel has a story about prostitution or, um, or like, any mafia gang suicide stuff like that so in 1927 was when it became the big low hotel it was actually purchased um so that way they could they demolished it they demolished the entire reed hotel to decided to and wow <laughs> they demolished the whole hotel and built on top of it they needed to um like redo safety regulations and fire hazards. Um, they ended up adding 11 more stories um, and then renamed it to the Big Low. It was actually purchased by Mariner S. Eccles in 1933 and then was named into the Ben Lomond Hotel. So we're gonna get deeper into that history because those were just bullet points that I probably should have mentioned, but here we go. We're gonna go deeper into all those details that I just mentioned. Um, so the this the hotel, uh, the 
Ben Lomond Hotel or the Big Low Apartments, I always get them confused, is actually considered to be one of the most haunted buildings in Ogden. It's also one of the tallest buildings um, here in Ogden. And on a lot of websites, it's actually listed as one of the most haunted places in Utah, which I've mentioned this before. A lot of places will say, no, this is the most haunted place. This is the most haunted place. But a lot of people consider the Ben Lomond Hotel or the Bigelow as one of the haunted, like most haunted hotels, uh, which, you know, makes sense considering it's been around and was built on the skeleton of an old hotel since 1891. So it'd be really shocking if there wasn't some kind of history on it. And also it's on historical 25th street, which I am going to do a video about, uh, at some point about the entire street, which that street was, is really well known for, for mafia, um, for prostitution, drugs, murder, just a lot of history behind that. Um, so it's not really that surprising, especially it's a hotel. So the Reed, the Reed Hotel had its very first recorded death in 1891. So not too long after it opened, it actually had its first death. It was from a man who he's, his body was found in his hotel room around 10 p.m. He died of tuberculosis. So his death was very, very, um, it was because of a sickness. It wasn't because of murder or an accident. It was because he had tuberculosis. So this was the very first death recorded. So let me, let me, let me preface that when they say the first death recorded, that doesn't mean that's the only death that's happened in the hotel. Because hotels, a lot of the times, um, and you can hear this from workers and other past workers, that hotels will actually um, cover up a lot of the murders and deaths and drug overdoses and stuff like that because it's really bad for ratings. People won't want to come to the hotel if they know that a lot of people have died there. So you have your recorded deaths where they have to notify the police and then you have your non-recorded deaths where a lot of them weren't recorded. So just want to mention that because I know I'm for certain that every hotel probably has more deaths in it than they say they do, but they don't want to say it because of business issues, which is kind of fucked up. Um, but he was the very first death, which was just basically the the door opening to all the other tragic, awful things that happened in the hotel. Um, so from 1891 until the hotel was remodeled in 1927, there were eight more deaths. Now, these were eight more recorded deaths, so that doesn't mean that there wasn't more deaths in between there, because a lot of people say, oh, just eight deaths, that's not, not that many. Um, for a hotel, that is kind of, but also those are the recorded deaths. So. Some of the deaths were just natural, some of them were accidents, but then you have those ones that of course were murders. So the very first that happened that was, it, that was someone taking their life was in 1902. Um, a couple had actually come to the hotel. Um, their names were Mr. and Mrs. Van Allen. The wife was actually said to have a lot of medical conditions. She had a lot of illnesses. And while her husband left to go to work the next day, she decided to take her own life by shooting herself in the head. Um, during Mr. Van Allen's uh, lunch hour, he decided to come back to the hotel and check on her. And him and the bellboy found her body dead in the bed. And uh, she was only 38 years old. So my theory, she probably was depressed. Uh, it didn't really emphasize what kind of illnesses she had. It just kind of said that she had a lot of illnesses. So it could have been mental or it could have been physical and she could have just kind of decided to pull the plug, unfortunately. Um, the first accidental death though happened a few years after that happened. Uh, a few years, oh actually no, sorry. My bad, if I could just read. The first accidental death happened a few years before the reed was demolished and made into the Biglow. So it happened in 1921, and a new cook, and I'm gonna try to say this, and it might be wrong. Um, it could be Asuji Nakono. Sorry if I said that wrong. He had actually fallen down three stories down an elevator shaft. So the theory of the witnesses is that he thought that he was getting freight from the third floor. So he went to open the elevator and step in to get that freight and there was no elevator there and he fell down the shaft and he died pretty automatically. Which, I have a fear of elevators. And when I hear stories like this, it just doesn't make it any, like, any better. It doesn't make 
the fear like go away. Um, not too long after, in 1926, the reed was demolished, and then it was made into the Big Low, which was actually built on top of the skeleton of the reed. So they demolished it, but they still used parts of it, and you can actually see how old some uh, parts of the building are. Um, and then they opened in June of 1927. So they built this. They, um, I'm pretty sure the, the use of the skeleton or of the foundation of the reed made building it a lot faster, but they ended up adding 11 more floors. So it has 13 floors and it has tons of room. The hotel hadn't been opened for a really that long until like the the first death occurred after the Big Low opened. And it wasn't a natural death or an accidental death, it was actually a murder. Um, so two years after they opened, the Big Low hosted um, a convention called the Utah Canners Association Convention, which is interesting. Um, a man who was named Dan Rollins, uh, he attended the convention um, and he had invited some friends up to his room and one of the people that he, um, Invited to his room was a man named, I lost it, Edward Spellman, which is funny because, you know, it's free and the teenage witch. Anyway, um, he, Rollins didn't know Spellman from before the convention. They actually met each other at the hotel in the convention. So Rollins knew all the other people that were in the party, but he didn't know Spellman at the time. Um, so... <laughs> One of the wives' friends, one of the wives of the friends that was within that group, she ended up drinking too much and got a little drunk and decided to lay down and take a nap to kind of sleep it off. So the rest of the group decided to go back to the party, including Dan Rollins and Edward Spellman, but Spellman decided to go back to the room and assault or attack the woman in her sleep. Uh, luckily, Rollins did show up, and there was a struggle. He struggled to get him into the elevator. When he couldn't do that, uh, Spellman tried to hit him. Um, he missed, and Rollins hit him hard enough to make him smack his head on the wall and die immediately. He died instantly, so this guy hit him hard. He hit his head hard. Um, the records for his death say that he died from a ruptured artery, so he hit him hard. And Rollins was actually charged for his death and acquitted for it. Um, so, uh, it really shows, you know, maybe don't invite strangers up to your hotel room. This, uh, uh, but this was, I think nowadays this would be considered maybe a uh, murder too because it wasn't an intentional death, it just happened because of the struggle. Um, but, I mean, this man, Rollins, probably saved that woman's life. Um, it's unfortunate that she was assaulted while she was drunk and asleep, and that's awful, but... So that was the very first murder, which really helps the energy of the hotel, right? It makes the hotel just so much better because like it's one thing if someone dies of natural causes because there are theories that if someone dies of natural causes a spirit will be will easily move on they can't be like angry or vengeful or anything like that but when someone dies because of murder or because of something potentially accidental or even taking their own life um i can understand how that could disrupt a lot of the energy and and really destroy the soul because you're being ripped out of your body before you're supposed to. Um, but also, this man tried to assault this woman, so he clearly wasn't a very nice man. Doesn't mean he deserved to die, but he clearly wasn't a very great person. <laughs> um, flash forward to 1933, the hotel was purchased by Mariner S. Eccles and was re renamed to the Ben Lomond Hotel. So we've finally gotten to the third name of the hotel. Uh, for several years after, luckily, as far as we know, the hotel remained quiet. There wasn't really any recorded deaths after that, but naturally, that changed, of course. So it wasn't until uh, 1939 that uh, more un, un, like terrible things 
occurred. So basically, two men had gotten out of a cab in front of the hotel, and they actually got in a pretty bad argument with one of the the bellboys that was helping them get their bags into the hotel. Cover your butt. You're being indecent. Okay. Sorry, I had to stop for a very forced kitty snuggle. I'm gonna have to go over here. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, anyway. Um, so as I was saying, they got out of their cab and was having a pretty heated argument with one of the bellboys. Uh, to, um, I believe they were the ones that helped you get your bags into the hotel. Um, so, after that, they went straight to the, um, the elevator and asked the, um, elevator operator lady to take them up to the top floor, but she got this weird feeling, like this weird energy about them and decided, you know what, I'm gonna take them back to the lobby and have, find someone to help me with them. Um, but when she got out, they ended up getting back in the hotel and taking it to the top floor before she could stop them. They went to a window on the top floor and decided to jump from the window one after the other and fell to their deaths to the ground. Um, it doesn't really go in very deep on why they chose to do this. And usually sometimes there is no explanation. There was another woman, um, I believe, there was another woman in 1951 who decided to jump from the, her ninth floor room window to her death as well. So what's really interesting is not too long after the two men jumped, from 1939 to 1950 there wasn't any recorded deaths, which again, reiterate, that doesn't mean there wasn't any, until that woman jumped out of her ninth floor window in 1959. Here's my issue. <laughs> This probably shouldn't be an issue. This probably even should, shouldn't be something that I've thought about. I don't understand why people jump off of high places to die. Because there have been records of people jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge and living. People who have fallen out of planes and lived. People who have jumped from hotel rooms and lived. And I just feel like the repercussion of falling and not falling correctly and potentially not dying would be worse than death itself because you'd be par probably paraplegic, probably brain dead, you'd be trapped in your body. And it's like a lot of these people probably take their own lives because they're sad or they're depressed or they feel like there's no other way out. But then if that were to happen, then, and you were to live, then there really isn't a way out until you do die. So I don't know. Um, just, you know, wanted to say. But anyway, anyway, I digress. All of these deaths were accidental, were murders, or people taking their own lives, but there was one pretty horrific, pretty awful death that occurred in 1976 on October 24th. Interesting. Um, the body of a man named Henry Topping Jr. was a hotel clerk, and his body was found, sorry, it was a bug. Um, his body was found in the lobby, and he had been stabbed 44 times. Later, the police actually stopped and convicted a 15-year-old boy uh, for the murder. It didn't really go deep into how they found him or how they figured out, like, he was the murderer. But, I mean, if he was, it makes me question why. What happened to inspire this 15-year-old child to stab someone 44 times. That's that's angry. That's not That's not like self-defense. That's anger. That's angry right there. Um it's no shock when you hear about accidental deaths, drug overdoses, murders or people taking their own life in hotels. Um I'm fairly certain hotels are probably the one of the top tier places that these things occur, especially when it comes to people taking their own lives. Um, I think my theory is that people don't want to do it at their homes, either because they don't want to ruin that memory, not just for themselves, but for the people that they love. Um, maybe their family lives there and they don't want to ruin it for them. Um, or maybe they want somewhere different and comforting and 
you know, don't want the guilt. I don't know, but it's really sad. I can't even imagine what it would be like to be one of the hotel workers and then find someone's body and, and, and then what do you do after that? Like. It's just, I don't know why I'm laughing. I'm not meaning to laugh. It's just my way of responding with the thought of such trauma. I don't, I don't think like, like I'm sure there are hotel maids that have had to clean blood off of carpets. Or like a lot of people have said that they won't even clean the blood off the carpet. They'll just like take that part of the carpet out and like put new carpet in or sheets. Like they'll, or the beds. The beds is a big one that they'll just flip the beds. Um, and that there are like signs to look out for when you're in a hotel, like different curtains or different paint or like uh, different parts of the carpet. Chances are someone died and blood got there. So, you know, that's fun to think about when you go to a hotel. It's almost something that like I want to kind of like figure out. I moved the table. Something that I want to like go to a hotel and see if I can <laughs> figure it out. I don't know. But there was another recorded death um and it's actually attached to one of the most well-known ghost stories that come with the Ben Lomond Hotel so a woman um had just gotten married she was about to spend her honeymoon um in the uh, Ben Lomond Hotel she was in room 1102 and when she was running a bath she accidentally drowned in her bath um, it doesn't really talk about if it was an accident or if someone killed her, but she ended up drowning. Guests have actually said that while they were trying to take a bath in the hotel, they could feel someone trying to push them into the water, or that if they were in the room watching TV, the bath would turn on and start running by itself. Um, what makes the story even sadder, though, is that after the tragic death of her, she, like, her son came to the hotel to gather her stuff, and in his depression from losing his mother, he ended up taking his life, and he was staying in the room right next to the room that she died in. Um, that's really... <sighs> I know I keep laughing, it's just... I'm not meaning to. I, I, it's very sad, and I guess that's my response to... My response to death is to approach it with humor. It's called gallows humor because for my brain, it's really hard to process. I can't even imagine what it feels like to get a phone call and, and let you know that your mom just died and we need you to come get your things. Like, I, I can't even think of where my brain would go. Um, and a lot of guests have said that they, uh, who have stayed in that room, have um there's like a fly and it's driving me insane but a lot of guests have said that they'll that they stay in the room that he killed himself in and they'll feel bouts of depression they'll actually hear a man talking in the room like they'll be in the bathroom and they'll hear someone talking or that they'll even see like physical apparitions um some staff have said that there will be calls from room 1102 but there'll be no one on the other side and that they'll smell lilac perfume which apparently was the perfume that the woman used to wear um, another thing that occurs in the hotel, apparently, is that the elevators will just randomly do their thing by themselves. They'll just move up and down the floors in a random pattern, and that there have been times where, like, the floor will stop, the elevator will stop on a certain floor and open as if they're letting someone out and then close and, you know, for, for no reason. Um, which could be the guy that fell down the elevator shaft. That could be it be anyone or it could be someone who's just trying to entertain themselves and they're like you know watch me do this watch the people freak out so I don't know there have been other you know people seeing apparitions in hallways cold spots you know the typical things that come with hauntings um, I've always been curious about it. I've always wanted to get a room there. And now that it's apartment buildings, I kind of want to live there. Not just because it's potentially haunted, and but because of the history and how beautiful the building is. It's very gorgeous. And, and when you walk into the building, and when you see the building, you can tell that it's just the history within it alone, that pieces of it have lasted throughout the years. This 
a hotel has basically been around since 18, since 1891 and now it's 2020 and it's still standing tall and just there, you know, and it's, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful building, which I have taken clips of it so you can see what it looks like, but it's a beautiful, beautiful building, but it's so, such a very, um, interesting thing that something so beautiful and so historical has, when you go inside, has such dark history. It's interesting how you can look at something, it's a great way of looking at something and, like, not judging a book by its cover, basically, where, like, you can see something on the surface, but you don't know the true depths until you really look into it. And that's how it is with a lot of hotels and a lot of buildings that, you know, there's, they're beautiful and they're gorgeous and they're beautiful art pieces, but they always have some kind of darkness behind it that makes them even more interesting. Also, what I think is really cool and what I find super, like, geeky is that, like, Walking in a place where someone walked in several years before you were born is very interesting. Ogden is one of the most interesting little cities, in my opinion. It has its issues, believe me. But there's so much history within the city that is so interesting. And, and walking down Historic 25th Street and, and knowing that someone from several years ago, hunt, like, like way back when walk down that street and just like the poker games and the murders and the prostitution and and all the things that could have happened there to me is really fascinating knowing that my feet are on the same floor and I'm looking at the same chandelier as someone did potentially back in 1933 is so cool to me personally I find that very cool um but also it's very sad I think hotels are one of the saddest buildings in the world because they hold so much dark stories and dark history and, and death and, and sadness and pain. If those walls could talk, I could only imagine what they would say. And it's really just very, very sad to think that those walls were the last walls that a lot of people saw. And I feel very bad for the people that work at the hotel and have had to experience these things throughout the years. Um, but it doesn't make it any less fascinating to me. Alrighty, so there you go. That is some dark, spooky history on the Ben Lomond slash Big Low Hotel apartment things. This is one of my favorite buildings, definitely, here in Ogden. It always has been, and ever since I've they, they used to put up signs around the, the, around Ogden that would tell you the history of the buildings, like, that you were at, and ever since then, I just grew this, I've always had an obsession with architecture and history of buildings, but it just made it more so, because, to me, it's almost like getting to know a person and their personality, you start to get to really know this building and, and learn about something so profound. And a lot of buildings here in Ogden are very old. Ogden was one of the very first settlements here in Utah, and it was originally known as Brownsville before it was Ogden. So it has so much history in it, and I am gonna touch on that in other videos because this video is probably already long enough, but there's so much history here, and it's so rich and creepy and spooky and dark, and I love it. Um, Ogden is amazing to me. Um, but those are the, the, uh, some history. Oh, I forgot to mention how big this building is. So the Ben Lomond Big Low Apartments Hotel has 13 floors, 23 executive suites, six two bedroom suites, 58 standard suites, and 12 short stay suites with full kitchens. So it's, so that compared to the Reed that was only five floors and only had 140 rooms and a fifth floor, it's a huge apart. It's huge. It's a huge hotel slash apartment building, and it's very cool. I wanted to go inside and look at it, but with COVID going on, I wanted to keep as much dis distance as I could. I did take some outside shots so you can see the building, um, but eventually, like, I would like to live there if I can live there, or if it is still kind of a hotel, I'd like to stay there. Um, not just for, of course, the ghosts, but to just feel the history within the building. But yeah, now that I'm done nerdgasming about historical buildings, 
Thank you for joining me in this video. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in me talking about other really cool, haunted, spooky, and historical places here in Ogden, I would really love to talk about them. Um, there's so much rich... There's so much rich history here that I love. I love learning about just new things like that. Um, and if you'd like to hear about it, let me know. Um, if you want to hit the subscribe button, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I've really sucked at uploading recently because my mental state has been, um, it's been bad. So it's been really hard for me to find the motivation to really do anything. If you could see my apartment right now, it's awful. Um, and I'm actually going to clean it after I'm done recording this. So I'm going to attempt to before my mind decides to tell me that I'm piece of shit. So, anyway, I digress. If you want to hit the subscribe button, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you can be notified whenever I post. Uh, I like to keep it spooky here all of the time, so it's not like the Halloween content is going to be any different than what it was or what it is. Honestly, I talk about spooky things all year because my life is spooky all the time. Gotta keep it spooky, gotta keep it interesting. But I love the fact that it's Halloween and spooky season, even though to me it feels different. And I think it's because of the election. Because I opened my ballot today, which I'm about to vote. It's so weird when you look at your ballot and you see Kanye West on the list, but also when you have to vote for the lesser of two evils. Like, who's worse than the other? And to me the choice is obvious. But it's just so, it's fucked up. But honestly, I feel like every election has been like that, where it's like, who's worse than the other? Let's not vote for that one, <laughs> like basically. So I don't know, but I'm going to be voting uh, by mail or by Dropbox, because I live by one. And you know, everybody's been having this crammed down their throat. But if you want to make a difference and you want to hear, have your voice heard, then vote. Because a lot of people think that their votes don't matter, and they do. So, if you're over the age of 18, if you're 18 or older, just do it. it literally, literally, all it is is a piece of paper. If you get it in the mail, it's a piece of paper. You fill in the little dot with, with, with a black or blue pen, and then you send it. And if you go on election day, it's just a lot of lines, and I don't want to deal with that. So, anyway. <laughs> Use your voice. Let your voice be heard. If you want changes to happen, you have to do it. So... Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna clean. Probably drink some coffee or some wine. Whichever happens first. And uh, I'll see you guys later. I hope you have a wonderful day and a beautiful night. And this is Kat signing off. Bye.